All right. Well, I'm back for a different topic, although a related topic with some overlap. So I'm going to talk today about GPS probe trace enhancements for OSM that we're doing at Telenav to create updates and improve the map with the community. So again, I'm Robert Stack, software engineer at Telenav. OSM++ design and development has been pursued by a number of people, but led by Tony Ma. Also, support for Hadoop and visualization by Matthew Nahum. And map matching expertise provided by Squirrel Gao. So, they're all here at the conference, and the rest of us, and most of the rest of us working on the OSM team at Telenav are also here at the conference. So it's great to be here with the community. Those of you who are here earlier, there'll be just a couple of repeat slides and then I'll move on to a new topic. So Telenav's mission is to help make people's lives less stressful, more productive, and more fun when they're on the go. Telenav, several months ago, launched what we call Scout for Apps. This is an HTML5-based navigation service that is built on top of OSM maps. So you can try it for free at this URL listed on the presentation. When you try it, you'll notice that this implementation does not have traffic. So that is something that will be coming in the future, but traffic is yet to be distributed through our commercial applications. So Telenav's involvement with OFM, OSM, we are making verify, verified OSM map updates based on a variety of inputs, some of which I'll talk about here. And one thing we're doing as part of this is to provide the technologies and analysis to enable map improvements. Not specifically the subject of my talk, but up here I have a update that we made to the map for airport outlines for Atlanta, Air, Atlanta Hartsfield Airport that one of us updated as part of our involvement with upgrading the map. So what is Telenav OSM++? It is a suite of technologies to improve OSM quality where we do a couple of different things. We employ algorithms to find data errors and inconsistencies on the map. And on the map, we're focusing on the routing network portion of the map, primarily the road features. We're also using our GPS probe data from our historic navigation sessions to further refine the map. This database is based on 30 million subscribers and 12 billion annual road miles driven. And we're using the results of what I'll describe in a bit more detail here shortly to work with the OSM community to op op upgrade OSM map quality. The display I have here on the right is just one of our user navigation sessions. In this case, from Sunnyvale up to San Francisco to our location today. So why Telenav OSM++? Well, we want to do this to improve the OSM map to create a better OSM map and also to improve the Telenav user experience once we do roll out commercial applications using the OSM map. For example, our navigation session here that I show may give an illegal turn guidance, it may say turn right at a place where there is a no right turn restriction. So the solution would be to let our GPS probe trails tell us that no left turns or no right turns are permitted here. Another thing we've done is before we got around to focusing on using probes is we did some map analysis where we would import the map and just look for interesting logical things that have to do with routing and navigation on the map. One of them, for example, is finding incorrect direction of flow based on connectivity, based on angles of ramps that meet roadways, based on simple things like on a double digitized road in the US, drivers are generally on the right side of the road, not the left. 
in the example I have here, <clears throat> I have one that is backwards. So we would flag it and review it, <clears throat> but we don't automatically update that to the map because this is a case I've chosen where the road is actually backwards in Arizona where the uphill side of the road switches with the other side of the road for a couple of miles before flipping back to a normal road configuration. <clears throat> so based on some of these analyses, recently we've corrected over 2,500 direction of flow issues that we found. And the example here, we have some of these turn connectors, or shortcuts, if you will, at T and other intersections. So we found a lot of them that did not have one-way direction of flow, which does impact the routes that you would end up getting, and also impacts the overall quality of the map if you don't see the arrows on one-way ramps. In this particular case, this one has been edited and updated based on the analysis that we did. So now I'll talk a little bit about our Telenav OSM++ GPS probe data delivery. We have over five terabytes of vehicle probe data, and then we anonymize it multiple times to make absolutely certain there's no question about tracking users or any of that sort of thing. So we then take these, not particularly individual trails, but all aggregated together, and we match them to short sections of OSM ways between junctions. We do this using Hadoop MapReduce, and then we use them for a number of improvements. Now, before we can use them, there are a lot of challenges that we work through, including GPS drift, scatter near tall buildings, and then we also have user sessions where people are navigating in parking lots, leaving their phone and navigation session on at home, making it look like someone is navigating around their backyard. A couple of examples here. A little bit hard to read, but this looks like a mess, but it is downtown Manhattan. There are so many tall buildings that our probes are showing up in a very diffuse pattern. Another example here where we've had some users use our navigation to walk their way to the Washington Monument. For vehicular routing, of course, we don't want to include that. And that compares with cleaner examples. For example, the over the Queensboro Bridge, we have a much more clean and distinct probe trail pattern. So I'm just going to do a few examples and demonstrations of the probe data visualization that we've done as we've developed these tools. Now in this case, I'm showing only probe trails from one day. And the colors here, they're not speed. Everybody generally thinks of red as slow traffic and green as fast traffic. I apologize, but in this case, it is red means that there are a lot of GPS probe traces that occurred right in that area. and green indicates one or a few probes in one cell. So I'll just give some examples here. And for those of you just arriving, I will go ahead and restart the first part of the presentation as soon as I complete through the presentation. So this will be a double bonus presentation. I do not. Thank you. So again, these are just one day worth of probe samples. We actually have over a year of probe samples at our disposal to do analysis with. So from this one day, you get downtown San Francisco with people, of course, clustered on the main roads. The Northeast Corridor. This is a very high level view, and you can see Washington, D.C. and New York City here. New York City, Midtown Manhattan, and like I mentioned before, there's a lot of diffuse probe trail data right around where the tall buildings are in Manhattan. And again, for those of you who just arrived, 
I'm going to go through this presentation twice for those of you who missed the first half. Here's some visualization in downtown Washington, D.C. Around where the White House and the Capitol is. And then here's just from out in a more rural area, near Lake Anna in rural Virginia. There's one big red swath, which is Interstate 95, very heavily trafficked. And then just a few other small probe traces from some country roads in this area. So one of the most exciting outcomes of this is our work on turn restrictions. The basic idea with the turn restrictions is if we find a very low proportion of transitions from one road to another through an intersection would imply a turn restriction because no one ever goes there. No right turn, no left turn, no U-turn type restrictions. Thus far, through our development, we have come up with around 550,000 total restrictions across the United States. So turn restrictions are, are vital for valid routing and guidance. And Telenet's plan is to share the high confidence turn restrictions with the community to suggest their inclusion into the map. We still have some work to do to, deter to determine which ones are high confidence. There are a couple of challenges with turn restrictions. A big one is that people may disregard the turn restriction, the no U-turn sign, and go through. And if enough people do that, we would have a number of probe traces that would say, that would indicate that perhaps this is a valid turn restriction. So that is a challenge and needs more analysis to figure out just how many traces are going through known places with turn restrictions that are telling us, oh, people just go there anyway. So that's one challenge. And the other challenge is we do end up generating a lot of turn restrictions, which are simply intersections with turns that pe where people never take them. For example, a turn from a major four-lane highway with crossroads across a median and over to a farm plot, for example, may be a turn that nobody doing a navigation session has ever taken. Therefore, we would initially flag that as a turn restriction. So one of the challenges is distinguishing those from the real turn restrictions, which are the signed ones that cause problems if you guide someone through that restricted turn in a navigation session. So there's another thing that we're working on, which is road classification changes. I mentioned this in my earlier talk, a little bit from a traffic perspective. Now, with a focus from the probe data, we want to identify those roads that have an unusually high amount of traffic and or extremely fast traffic that are in the OSM map with a relatively ro low road tagging scheme. So essentially, if you find a residential road that has a huge amount of traffic going very fast, it's a very strong candidate for suggesting an upgrade to perhaps a tertiary or a secondary or primary. So we want to highlight the busiest underranked roads, the least busy overranked roads, and then submit those update them ourselves and submit them to the community and suggest their upgrades and downgrades. One caveat here is that probe volume is correlated to telenav client navigation sessions. However, our sessions are generally nationwide distributed and tend to focus more on the major metropolitan areas as opposed to the rural areas. So the plan is to review the widest variations of these volumes and their classification, also balance them with the highway functional classification system, which I mentioned in my previous talk, balance them with those guidelines for highways, and then in the end to defer to the community for decisions on non-obvious way upgrades and downgrades. And here I've just brought in a little chunk of downtown Houston, Texas, which has all of the six important road highway tags from residential all the way up through the motorways.
We're also potentially looking to integrate this with a map roulette challenge. And the map roulette challenge would say something like, this road appears to be over or underclassified. Here are some statistics for the road. And here are some typical guidelines for the classification we suggest. Are you ready to change the classification? So that is my presentation. I'll take an initial set of questions and answers, and then I will restart the presentation because I realize about two thirds of us here have walked in about halfway through the presentation. So any initial questions before I do a restart of the first half? Yes. Ah, uh, the question is, do we have people holding devices to yeah. be the probes or something like that? Um, no, what we're doing actually is using people who are navigating with our existing clients and the navigation sessions as part of that in order to give directions, turn left here, turn right there. Those sessions need to keep a good track of where the person is at the given time. So we then have that because we, we are giving the navigation guidance from our servers. There's back and forth communication between the device, which is an Android or um, iPhone or Windows phone application. So there's communication back and forth. And as part of that communication, the location is included in that. The key thing then is we then anonymize, strip out all of the user-based information to store the GPS probe trails for this processing. Yes. We would have the highest pro concentration of probe data, I would say, next in Mexico and, ca and Canada. So, and then beyond that, more limited probe data in places like Europe and China. So North America is our first focus, and the long-term goal and vision is, of course, worldwide deployment. So, um, but a lot of the, pro the probe data is essentially based on where we have our existing navigation clients, which at the moment, aside from the Scout for Apps link that I mentioned earlier, are not using OSM data yet. That will be coming soon. But we have the, uh, we have the probe trails to use from the existing navigation sessions, mostly United States so far. Yes? That is, that is something that's kind of on a trade, um, a trade basis. In terms of the raw probe data, um, that's, uh, that, it's a huge amount of data, and we don't make the raw probe data and put that out publicly. Yes. Uh, we've talked about that at a very preliminary state internally. So, I mean, I really like, I noticed that uh, with your talk as well. So, um, I think that, I think that would be a great thing to do. So, and I'd like to open that up for wider discussion within Telenav. So, because we have talked about it before, but it hasn't made, it hasn't made a high cut on our roadmap just yet. So, thank you. Okay. Yes? Are you talking about the possibility of perimeter switching? Mm-hmm. It won't be a bulk import, and a decent percentage of those are probably the case that I mentioned where it's a turn restriction to a road that nobody ever takes. There's no physical turn restriction there. So our most likely thinking is a map roulette challenge, where after we clean them up and figure out which ones are very likely to be these very ter uh, valid turn restrictions, as opposed to the ones that are pointing out to farmland, once we find a good way to trim those and bring that down to a much more manageable number of high quality candidate turn restrictions, then we're thinking possibly a map roulette challenge. 
that really, whether we deliver it through map roulette or another means, depends on how well armchair mapping through map roulette can address a turn restriction, since that requires at least some level of knowledge in many cases of what's going on on the ground. Okay. So for those of you who walked in uh, partway, I apologize for starting early here, and I'll just go ahead and take it from the top. So those of you who have been here for the whole thing, feel free to move on and start heading towards lunch, because I know it's getting pretty past my usual lunch time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So I will give three talks today, this being the third one, being the same thing, Telenav GPS probe trace enhancements for OSM. Again, I'm Robert Stack, software engineer at Telenav, OSM++ design and development by Tony Ma, who's here in the audience, Hadoop and visualization development by Matthew Nahum, and also map matching expertise provided by Squirrel Gao here in the audience. So there are a lot of us here from Telenav and we're very excited to be here at State of the Map all weekend. So, and of course, again, a thank you to all of you in the community who have made all of the map possible. Okay, most of you have seen this already. Telenav's mission statement is to help make people's lives less stressful more productive and more fun when they're on the go. Scout is our consumer-facing brand that we show through mobile devices, through in-car navigation sessions on the web. We at Telenav launched Scout for Apps several months ago using OSM Maps. So with this URL, you can give it a try and use it for navigation sessions on an HTML5 browser. So we are the first to create an HTML5 browser using OSM maps. These maps currently do not have traffic on them yet, but that will be coming. So a little bit about Telenav and OSM. We're making verified OSM map updates and providing technologies and analysis to enable these improvements. This here is an example, not necessarily of the road features, but of an improvement we've done to update airport outlines to make sure that they're accurate. So here's one of our edits up here for Atlanta Airport. So what is Telenav OSM++? It is a suite of technologies to improve OSM quality. We employ algorithms as well as the use of GPS probe data to further refine the map. Our database is based on 30 million subscribers and 12 billion annual road miles driven. And we, re we use the results to work with the OSM community to upgrade the map quality. What I have on the right here is just a sample navigation session while driving through this navigation session we would be collecting the probe data and anonymizing it for use for these projects. So why do we want L Telenav OSM++? Well, it's to improve the OSM map, which is critical for the community and critical for us at Telenav, which also then in turn feeds into improving the Telenav user experience with our mobile and other clients. As an example, navigation session may give an illegal turn guidance trying to tell you to make a u-turn in a place where a u-turn is not legal the solution then would be to let the gps probe traces that we've obtained over a long period of time tell us statistically that no turns are likely to ever be permitted here so before i get into the probe trace handling a bit more the Telenav started OSM++ project by analyzing and reporting on the map. And we found a number of issues and made some corrections as well. I'll just give an example of one here, which is the incorrect direction of flow. By looking at the connectivity of roads and the way that ramps and other roads merge up with roads, the angles involved, 
the topology of the roads, and even things like doubly digitized roads, making sure that people are driving essentially on the right-hand carriageway as opposed to the left-hand carriageway. Found a lot of issues through that and both distributed to the community as well as it edited internally at Telenav cases like this where it's hard to see, but the right-hand road here has arrows going down and the left-hand road has arrows going up. In all of these processes, we have not done bulk updates or automatic updates to the OSM map because they need to be verified. And I show this example because this is a highway in Arizona where traffic actually does go on the left for several miles while climbing a mountain. And this other road, traffic actually goes on the other side. So Telenav has made a large number of direction of flow corrections based on this analysis recently. Over the last two months, we pushed 2,500 plus direction of flow corrections, including this one here, which is simply a couple of one-way connecting ramps connecting a smaller road to a more significant road. So here I'll talk a little bit about our probe data delivery. We have over five terabytes and growing of vehicle probe data anonymized multiple times. Then we match them to short sections of the OSM ways using Hadoop MapReduce. And then we use these for a number of improvements. Now doing this work is challenging because of the way that our sessions and the GPS works. We have GPS adrift, we have scatter near tall buildings, and this display here on the right, the very red one, is downtown New York City, midtown Manhattan, where there are so many tall buildings, it just looks, a, looks like a blur of probe points from people driving on the roads. We have people navigating in parking lots, leaving their navigators on after they've gone home. In this case here, you can see that people have been using our navigators to figure out how to get and walk right up to the top of the Washington Monument. So I'll just show a few slides of our probe data as we visualize them on the map. And one caveat with these slides and these displays is these are only the probes that we've collected for one day, as opposed to the much larger data set that we actually have available. And please note the colors here, they're not speed, they're simply probe density. Red meaning we had a lot of probes pass through that one cell, and green meaning just one or a handful of probes. And again, for those of you who came in partway through, most of you are now getting a repeat. Feel free to leave as you're getting hungry. So here's San Francisco again, and you can see, again, it's one day. So over a, a large period of time, we would eventually have users driving all these little residential roads in San Francisco. But in just one day, we have them going mostly on the major arterials, and of course, the freeways, including the Bay Bridge here. Here's a very wide scale visualization of the entire Northeast Corridor from Washington, D.C. up to Boston. And you can see the greatest concentration of high probe traces are on the very high volume freeways. I believe that the day chosen for this visualization was uh, Christmas Day. So there's going to be a lot of interstate traffic as showing on Interstate 95 on these days. Here's that midtown Manhattan where you can see the probe trails are fairly distinct along the rivers, along the Queensboro Bridge, that sort of thing. But very diffuse as you get to the tall buildings right in the core of midtown Manhattan. Here's Washington, D.C. This one's at a higher zoom level, so we're actually showing each individual grid cell that we're snapping to with the White House and the Capitol. And here's just a little patch of rural area out in rural Virginia. You see a big swath of red, which is Interstate 95 from the northeast down to Florida with plenty of traffic on Christmas Day, I'm sure and then just an occasional set of probe traces on the country roads.
So out of all of this probe data, one of the most exciting projects is that of creating and inferring turn restrictions. So what we then, what we do is infer that a very low proportion of transitions from one road to another at an intersection implies a turn restriction. No right turn, no left turn, no U-turn. So far, we've identified around 550,000 turn restrictions in the United States. They're crucial for valid routing and guidance, and the plan is to share high confidence turn restrictions with the community to suggest their inclusion into the map. We need to do this sharing through the community and suggesting simply because we cannot say with certainty based on probe traces whether a turn restriction is a true legal turn restriction or not. So the challenges are people using our navigation sessions who violate the turn restrictions, see the no U-turn sign and say, eh, I really want to get there, I'm just going to blow through it. And the other challenge is we do create turn restrictions that are based on turns that people never take even if there may be no actual turn restriction. And the classic example there is where you're on a four-lane highway with crossroads or U-turn places that mostly go just to like farm plots or farm homes or things like that. So we need to find better ways to filter those out. And that's the importance of having these validated before placed onto the map. So another project based on the probe data is road classification changes. This is in design. It is not actively built out yet. But the idea is, based on the GPS probe volumes as well as the traffic speeds that we observe, is to highlight the busiest underranked roads in OSM and also highlight the least busy overranked roads, where the busiest underranked roads are a more compelling change to the map because there are freeways out there that have very light traffic on them, and that's just how they are. One caveat is our probe volumes are correlated to Telenav client navigation sessions, but that generally does cover the whole United States with a little more concentration in the big metropolitan areas. So the plan is to work with the community to balance these suggestions, review the widest variations of probe volumes and speeds against their current highway tagging in OSM, balance with the highway functional classification system guidelines for highways, and to defer to the community decisions on upgrades and downgrades. Not for sure that we would go through map roulette, but we are considering either map roulette challenge or other data delivery for the community to work with these road classifications. And that is my second run of the very same talk. At this point, I'm now glad to be done, but still very happy to take questions and answers before we break here. Yes. The OSM, the question is, is the OSM++ an open source or an upgrade or a purchase or something like that? Um, the, it essentially is a set of tools that we built internally at Telenav, and those tools are relying upon the probe data, which as I mentioned before, the raw probe data is not something that we release to the public. However, all of the derived results, or most of the derived results that apply for the community, such as the turn restrictions, such as the upgrades and downgrades grades to classification, those outputs are things that we would then distribute to the community. Yes. The question is, do we record the times that people do the turn restrictions? We, um, in our probe traces, we actually do have those times, but at this time, we do not make the distinction to try to ferret out the time of day based turn restrictions. That is certainly an upgrade to our processing that we've talked about and have not focused on yet. Those are much more challenging to do in terms of time bucketing everything, especially 
because these time of day turn restrictions are highly variable from place to place. Sometimes it's a 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Sometimes it's a 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. based on a school district getting out. But very good question on our long-term roadmap. Any more questions or are we all hungry? <laughs> all right, thank you again, everyone. <laughs>